I'm Conrad Piasek, the Senior Manager of Application Frameworks at Magic Leap. And uh, today I want to talk to you about Magic Script. So for the last year or so, my team has been working hard on Magic Script. And I'm here today to share with you some of the things we've done. There we go. Uh, but before we go into what it is, I really want to talk about why we made Magic Script and what purpose and need it serves. <clears throat> so we wanted to make spatial application development more accessible to as many developers as possible. For this reason, we chose to use uh, JavaScript language. It's the most popular language on GitHub for 2018, 2019, and it's been growing in popularity for a very long time. Um, so we added all of the Lumen Runtime C++ APIs and exposed them as JavaScript APIs. While this is still very cool and useful, it still didn't have the same development paradigm that JavaScript developers were used to in terms of, you know, you're not going to code it in a C++ style application if you're a JavaScript developer. So we decided to take it a step further and we built an abstraction layer on top of our JavaScript bindings and we created a cross-platform JavaScript framework which works on iOS, Lumen Runtime, and on Android. So, just diving in a little bit more. Magic Script, we expose the Lumen Runtime APIs like I mentioned. That's over 2,000 C++ APIs with direct bindings into JavaScript. So with that, you can create both landscape and immersive applications. You have uh, access to TCP and UDP connections as a developer. We expose the file system, as well as other system calls. We've added in the, the ability to make WebGL possible in the platform. And uh, we support third-party JavaScript libraries from NPM. But one of the most important things is that this is Almost everything I'm talking about here today is open sourced on GitHub. So we're using the latest ECMAScript standard for JavaScript, uh, which is powered by V8, the same JavaScript engine that's running in Google Chrome and developed by Google. To that, like I said, we add the Lumen Runtime APIs as direct native bindings. Then we pepper in some W3C APIs, such as WebGL and Fetch. And we've added some Node.js APIs as well to enable the third-party NPM libraries. What Magic Script is not. So it's not the browser, you don't have access to the DOM, and it's not a web app. Similarly, we are not Node.js. We did not port Node.js. That was a, a conscious effort. The Node.js APIs, they serve a different need, and uh, not all of them are necessary for building spatial applications. And similarly, this is not a WebView or a Cordova-style application. We have W3C APIs that we add, but we, we choose, and these are conscious choices as to what we bring over. So more about the framework. This is a React-based framework that we uh, has a, the declarative syntax that React developers are familiar with. We built the abstraction layer on top of the JavaScript Lumen Runtime APIs for supporting the Lumen Runtime backend. And we made use of React Native to plug in directly to ARKit and ARCore. So we built a cross-platform mixed reality JavaScript framework that runs on Lumen Runtime, iOS, and on Android. The declarative syntax that you'd get with the React programming style you have that available for you as well. Right now, we've got a little over 30 different components that you can make use of. Uh, these are things such as buttons, 3D models, images, various layouts, as well as uh, drop downs, progress bars, the, the whole UI kit for developing rich UI. So, this is what a sample of the source code looks like. If we start at the top, we have the text and the view which we take from our magic script components. In React, we set the state. We have the hello magic script as the message. And the render function makes use of the view and the text with the properties for size, or attributes for size and position. And then the message itself is in the body of the text. That's what to be, what's to be displayed. This is the entire source code that any developer would need to write to have 
this show up. So we have iOS on the left, Hello Magic script, Android in the middle, and then Magic Leap on the left. So here's a, an example of it actually running. For on Magic Leap, you have the controller input. This is a, just the image gallery carousel that we have. And then the same application here on Android, the gallery. This image is being loaded over a network. That's why it's a little bit slower to load. And then our two-handed developer is able to get it working on iOS as well. And again, touch input works. It's a little bit hard to see in, because of the overlap, but there you go. The image did change. Um, so here we built a, had a hackathon a few months ago, just an internal one within my team, and someone built a piano keyboard. This is on Android that was running, and then we have it again just on, on iOS. So um, we've got some really cool tools that we've got possible to enable this and really um, speed up the onboarding experience for developers. The uh, command line utility that we've built, uh, Magic Script CLI, it's built on Node.js in JavaScript. Um, and again, all open sourced and on GitHub. So to get up and running, you would need to have Node.js installed on your system. After that, you, we will need you to install the Magic Leap SDK to compile for Lumen OS. And then the Magic Script CLI is installed um, using NPM. And more details at this uh, URL below on detailed steps for all of these pieces. <clears throat> so once you've done those first three steps, to initialize a project, we have the Magic Script init command. That uh, gives you an interactive prompt to answer a number of questions. The first being, what's the visible name of my application? The second one is, what's the ID or the bundle identifier of the app that I'm creating? The third one we have is, what's the folder where you're going to be creating this project? So this is the name of the folder relative to where you called the init command. Uh, fourth, we've got what type of application. There's components. We have support for some others. But we're talking about components right now. And then for target of the application, target platforms to support, we have Lumen iOS and Android. That creates the project template for all those three different types and uh, does a quick rename based on the bundle identifier and application name that you, you choose. After which, it's really just a simple build command, magic script build, where you specify the target. Here I have target for Lumen iOS and Android work as well. And the dash I option is to perform an installation of the application as soon as the compile process is finished to install it onto a device. And last, to actually get it up and running on the screen, it's magic script run, and again, specifying the target. To get uh, iOS and Android working, there are a couple of other dependencies that you need to install. So the React Native CLI and Yarn for both platforms. Yarn is just a different package manager, an alternative to NPM that works a little bit better with the React Native CLI. Um, for iOS development, you would need Xcode, Homebrew, and CocoaPods. And for Android, it's Android Studio. These dependencies are basically the ones that you would need for doing React Native development anyway. And here are some just helpful links and URLs for more information. Starting at the top, magicscript.org. That's our uh, sort of microsite landing page. We have everything that I've talked about today is accessible from there, including all these other URLs. The api.magicscript.org, that's a detailed API documentation for all of the over 2,000 Lumen Runtime APIs and all other native bindings we bring into JavaScript, to Magicscript on Lumen Runtime. The components uh, subdomain, that has detailed descriptions of all the components that we cr we've created uh, with source code examples, detailed property descriptions, and default values, as well as all the event handlers you can use on them. And uh, last of all, 
we've got a samples repository uh, in our GitHub page that I'm showing, and there are close to 40 different sample and example projects inside that repository for various things like hand tracking, eye tracking, image tracking, gesture recognition, and so on. And thank you very much. <laughs>